guys, good morning. Welcome to today's Zoo School Live. We have a special edition where we are going to be meeting our veterinary staff and uh, we're gonna be doing an annual exam with a special one of our exhibit animals as well. All right, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you guys um, some really cool drawings that we have of our individual who's going to be examined and his name is Mr. Wilson. This is from Walter. Looks just like him, doesn't it? Well, you guys will see soon. And Paige, fantastic. Thanks so much for drawing our patients, you guys. Uh, my name is Elisa, I'm an educator here at the zoo and I'm gonna be introducing um, our veterinary staff, okay? So we have Abby and Courtney, our certified veterinary technicians. And we have Dr. Goodman, who is Elmwood Park Zoo's uh, veterinarian. All right, and they're actually going to give you guys a tour of the clinic before we do our annual exam on Mr. Wilson, the Muscovy duck. Hi everybody, um, like she said, I'm Abby, I'm one of the vet techs here at Elmwood Park Zoo. I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to our clinic, show you some of the equipment that we use, and then they're gonna get Mr. Wilson out and in here so that we can do his exam. So if you'd like to follow me this direction, this is actually our treatment room. It's also our lab. So you can see we've got a sharp spin and some of the needles that we use on our patients on the counter. We've also got some lab equipment like our microscope and we've got some centrifuges where we spin blood down to send out to our labs. <laughs> so, and then over this direction, we have a wonderful dental unit. We do try to do dentals on all of our animals when we get the opportunity. Just like you go to the dentist every year, we like to do dental work on our animals too to keep their teeth healthy. So, back here is our back room. We use this primarily as an x-ray room, so you can see we have an x-ray unit up here. So this will shoot the x-ray beams onto this plate. We have digital x-ray here, which is really cool because as soon as we shoot the x-ray, you can see it comes up on the computer over there. So if you want to take a closer peek at that x-ray, it's actually pretty cool. You know, we have a baby Saki monkey right now, and you can see in this x-ray, this is actually the baby right here. There might be a little bit of glare. So um, that baby is doing really, really well. So down here, we have an ultrasound unit. This was actually funded by a grant from the McLean Contributorship. So we're very grateful for that. This is actually a really cool ultrasound unit. We use it a lot for various things. If you swing back this direction, we've got our autoclave. We use this to sterilize instruments. Basically, it heats them up really, really hot. We use hot steam sterilization so that we have sterile surgical instruments for any surgeries we need to do. And our fluid pump, which was actually donated by Springhouse Veterinary Hospital. We're very appreciative of that. Um, that allows us to give fluids to any patients that are, again, having surgery or need it. And then this right here is our anesthesia machine. So this is really, really important for our vet practice. It's one of the things that we use the most often. Basically, any time that we have to anesthetize an animal, we use this machine. It uses oxygen combined with some gas to help them go to sleep and stay to sleep while we're doing anything on them that we need to do. You know, if it's a dangerous animal, you don't really want to do a jaguar exam awake. So in order to get hands on something, we'll anesthetize them. So we use this quite frequently. It's a really great unit. So. And then here on this counter, we've got some of our lab equipment, um, various things that we use. We have our iStat, which gives us some chemistry values so we can check kidney values and liver values to see if an animal is doing well. We've got some blood tubes, different types depending on the test we want. And some monitors here where we can monitor single things like uh, glucose, which is how much sugar you have in your blood currently. So. I believe that we are ready to come back into the front room, we'll give you guys one last look as we back out, and then we're gonna take a look at Mr. Wilson's exam. All right, so this is Mr. Wilson. He is our Muscovy duck. Uh, we estimate that he is about 12 years old, so we don't actually know a whole lot about Mr. Wilson's growing up. Um, he was found in 2010 in a parking lot here in Norristown. Um, we tried to find the owner, didn't find anybody, uh, didn't have anybody to take him. Um, and even though we tried to not take animals in um, from around the area, uh, we knew that we could provide a good home for Mr. Wilson. So Mr. Wilson came to live with us. So his age is a guess, so we say about 12. Um, and they could live to be up to about 20 years in managed care. 
So he still has a lot of life left in him. Um, now, Mr. Wilson here is a domestic Muscovy duck. So most of the ones that you see here in the United States are going to be the domestic version. Uh, but they do actually have wild Muscovy ducks. Um, to find them, usually you have to go down to like Texas, Florida on the Gulf Coast. Um, and most of them are going to be black. They're mostly black with modelings of white. Um, so Mr. Wilson also does not look like the wild Muscovy duck. Um, and then there's also uh, wild populations that go down from Central America down into South America as well. Um, so if you want to go find a wild Muscovy duck, you're going to have to go much farther south than Norristown. Um, <laughs> but Mr. Wilson here is um, <laughs> a domesticated Muscovy duck that we have. Um, and they are the largest duck that you will find in North America. Um, so a little different from their um, wild counterparts um, is their diet here. Um, so domesticated ducks eat mostly a duck grain um, and we give them some fruits and some remain. Uh, occasionally they get some bugs. Um, out in the wild, a lot of wild Muscovy ducks, um, they actually like to eat mollusks out of wetlands. They like to eat fish. Uh, they'll eat some of the grasses and reeds. Um, but his uh, diet is a little more commercial since he's a little more domesticated. Um, they're a non-migratory duck, so where they grow up and where they're laid, laid is where they are. Um, so he does not go south for the winter. He's actually pretty cold tolerant. <laughs> Um, so as much as he would probably like to go visit Florida, he stays here year round. Um, and I think that's about it. I mean, one thing about Muscovy ducks is they are not water ducks as much as all the other species of ducks. Um, they actually like to live in forested areas. Um, and in the wild, they nest in trees and in tree cavities. So, you know, around here, we like to see a lot of mallard ducks and you usually see a nest, you know, right by the edge of the pond. Um, in the wild, these guys would be up in trees, which is interesting, because usually for a duck, you feel like they're always near the water. Um, but the scobies just like to do their own thing. All right, I think he's ready for his exam. He's a very good patient. <laughs> All right, so one of the first things that we do um, to examine our animals is that we check their microchip. Uh, most of our animals, just like your cats and dogs and other animals at home, have a, uh, a chip that is placed somewhere on their bodies in order to make sure that we are keeping track of them uh, in our captive inventory. So we've just scanned his chip um, to confirm that it's Mr. Wilson, even though there's no other duck here <laughs> just like Mr. Wilson. Uh, the next thing that we often do is examine uh, their eyes and their ears. So we have an ophthalmoscope here, which helps us to look at his eyes uh, and to check the back of his retinas to make sure that they are healthy and that we're not seeing any signs of uh, disease or age-related changes in the eyes. Um, Mr. Wilson is being very cooperative for this, which we always appreciate. And his left eye looks very good. And the right eye also looks very good. Um, so some of you guys might know that certain species of birds have very large ears, uh, particularly in the owl species, which helps them to hear and locate their prey. Uh, many of the water birds actually have quite small ears, um, which are just little openings Uh, within their feathers so that they can hear, but that they're not so large that they can uh, accumulate water when they are swimming around. So he just has a tiny, tiny little ear opening right about here, um, which I don't know if you guys can appreciate at home, uh, but we wanna make sure that there's no debris or uh, any other problems within his ear canal so we like to check those. Yes, there we go. Yes, you're being so good. <laughs> Another feature of Muscovy ducks is they don't actually have a quack noise, particularly the males. They make this little hissing noise, uh, which is unique to domestic Muscovy ducks, particularly the males. Uh, so next, we're gonna listen to his heart. 
which is exactly where you would think it would be. Can you turn around sideways a little bit, friend? Oh, thank you. Um, and since you guys can't hear what I'm hearing on my stethoscope, uh, we made an audio recording of Mr. Wilson's heart so that you guys can hear what it sounds like at home. are very unique in that in addition to having lungs, which are a lot smaller than what we find in most of our mammal species, they also have a series of air sacs. Uh, this helps them to have very efficient uh, gas exchange in terms of getting oxygen into their bodies. So he has air sacs all over, uh, including in his kind of neck region, uh, back by his tail, and in his chest. So we like to listen to make sure that the air is moving through there normally and that we don't hear any signs of disease. As per usual, he sounds just excellent. Thank you, perfect. Uh, after we're done listening to his heart and lungs and air sacs, uh, we like to feel uh, his coelomic cavity so birds generally have a combined uh, chest and abdominal cavity that is known as the coelom. Uh, so if this was a female uh, bird, we would be feeling in here for eggs or uh, any other abnormalities that we would be concerned about. Yes, you're being very cooperative. And then I'm gonna just switch spots here with Abby. Um, we like to monitor uh, the condition of his feathers to make sure that everything is looking good. So Mr. Wilson, as you can see, has a really nice full wing of very healthy looking feathers. Yes, you do. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, because Mr. Wilson does have the ability to fly, uh, we give him just the slightest wing trim. Uh, of his right wing so that he can't uh, get himself into trouble on the zoo grounds. Uh, one very fun feature about birds is that they have a preen gland. So it's basically where there's a source of conditioner that he can rub with his bill and then he can put it all over his feathers to give them this nice shiny white appearance. So here is his little preen gland. So we want to make sure that that is uh, healthy and normal. Uh, this sort of yellow waxy discharge uh, is excellent to see because it helps him keep his feathers in great condition and nice and waterproof. <laughs> yes. Uh, we also will open up his mouth, um, which he does not always appreciate, and check his tongue and the inside of his mouth, which you guys can maybe get a little sense of, just to make sure that there's no abnormalities in there. That looks like a pretty healthy mouth, Mr. Wilson. Great job. <laughs> yes, so unhappy Not with that. Um, so Mr. Wilson is an older duck, um, as Courtney mentioned. He is about 12 years old, and while we still have uh, many years to look forward to with him, um, we do like to keep an eye on things to make sure that he's not developing any sort of arthritis. Um, so one of the things that we've been able to do very recently is use a thermal imaging camera uh, in order to monitor the temperatures in his feet and legs. I know you're excited about this. I know you are. Um, so we're going to come over here um, and look at the temperatures in his feet. So you can see that the red areas are the warmest areas. Thank you very much, Courtney, for the focusing assist. Um, so you can see that this part of his leg here is about 90 degrees. Uh, one thing that's interesting about birds is that their body temperature is normally a lot higher of mammals. 
So his normal body temperature is around 100 to 104 degrees. So this is a nice temperature for him. We want to make sure that his feet are these nice cool colors, the blues and the purples. And that lets us know that there's no sign of inflammation or um, you know, signs of arthritis in his feet. And we really wouldn't be able to do this type of testing uh, without the generosity of some of our donors. Uh, this was provided to us by Metropolitan Veterinary Associates and has been helpful in so many ways that we can monitor our animals like Mr. Wilson and uh, our current giraffe, Gerald, who has uh, some foot problems that we are managing. Uh, other ways that we manage uh, his foot condition is by taking x-rays. Uh, so we have a nice x-ray here of his legs. And you can see that, you know, he has his long leg bone and his nice webbed foot. And then the right foot over here. So everything looks nice and symmetrical and healthy. So that's another thing that we do for our animals uh, on a regular basis is to take x-rays. Um, we have some other x-rays specifically of Mr. Wilson. Um, so you can see his bill. Uh, his brain lives in this part of his skull. You can even see the nice cute little soft tissue bump that he has here that makes him a Muscovy duck with all of the tissue proliferation. And then we're able to look at his trachea, uh, where air comes in and out of his mouth, and his spine to make sure that things are nice and healthy. Uh, we are also able to monitor uh, some of his internal organ structures, like his heart, which is this heart-shaped structure in the middle of his chest, and his liver, and make sure that that looks nice and healthy. And if you're wondering, these bright metal clips in here are what we use to monitor animals when they are under anesthesia. Uh, so this is keeping track of his heart rate. Good boy. One of the last things that we look at are his feet uh, because he has to be sort of picked up for this so that we can get a good look at the bottoms of his feet. I know you're ready for it too. Yes, he's, heavy. he's a heavy duck. <laughs> so we want to look, oh, oh, Mr. Wilson. This is my least oh, favorite part. Oh, yes, yes. This is my least um, favorite So we part. can check out his feet. Look at the webbing. Uh, I will tell you all that he just recently had a nail trim, which is why his nails look so nice and short. And then, oh, oh my, my goodness, goodness. buddy. Uh, and then we also want to look at the bottoms of his feet whenever you're ready, sir. You need a, you need a minute. Um, to make sure that the underside of his feet, that all of his uh, toe joints look nice and healthy on both feet. <laughs> yes. Oh, you look great, buddy. Everything is perfect. So okay. Oh. <laughs> so, just like you guys, uh, you. Oh, there you go. Wilson. Don't step uh, on me. Just there like you go. guys go to your doctor uh, every year to get shots and uh, that you take your, you know, your pets to a veterinarian every year for shots. Uh, Mr. Wilson also needs a vaccine this year. Uh, we vaccinate all of our birds at Elmwood Park Zoo with a uh, vaccine against West Nile virus. This is a mosquito-borne disease that um, can make them quite sick, uh, and this vaccine uh, helps to keep him nice and healthy. Uh, so Mr. Wilson has, uh, you know, a lot of good muscle mass on his body because he's very well fed here. Um, so we're just going to give him a little vaccine. Yep, which he doesn't seem to mind at all. Wasn't nearly as bad as having your feet looked at. No, good job. Excellent. Put that in the sharp spin. Um, so some other things that we're able to do for our animals, particularly our older animals, is to use this cold therapy laser. Uh, Mr. Wilson's doing extremely well and does not have any signs of arthritis. Uh, but if he did, we would be able to use this uh, cold therapy laser in order to help uh, stimulate blood flow and reduce inflammation. 
Um, and then as part of our uh, geriatric animal medicine program here at the zoo, uh, we rely on a lot of companies who provide us with high quality nutritional supplements, uh, as well as specially formulated medications. Uh, and most recently, we've been extremely grateful to both veterinarian recommended solutions and to Wedgwood Pharmacy uh, for donating so much free stuff that we get to use in our animals to make sure that everybody's continuing to do well uh, during the zoo closure. So I really want to thank uh, Veterinarian Recommended Solutions as well as Wedgwood Pharmacy and Metropolitan Veterinary Associates for all of their um, real significant outpouring of support during our closure. Um, it's really helping us to make sure that our animals are doing extremely well um, and that we can continue to take excellent care of them. Uh, do we have any questions from the, the audience that uh, Courtney might be able to, to answer? Sounds like we have a lot of questions, so we will get through as many as okay. we can. Uh, Carla and Chase want to know how often do the animals at Elmwood Park Zoo get a checkup? So it depends on the animal. Um, the birds, because they need their West Nile vaccine every year, they will have an annual exam every single year. Um, now it doesn't mean that we put them under anesthesia every year, um, but we will look at them, we'll listen to their heart, um, sometimes we'll get blood from them. Um, that thing we'll do yearly. Um, a lot of our animals that we can't anesthetize easily, like uh, the giraffe or the bison, so we do visual exams on them every year. Um, and then we are able to hand inject them with their vaccines. Um, so they still get seen yearly for an exam, but it isn't quite as uh, thorough as what we could do here with Mr. Wilson. Um, and then as far as the cats, um, all the cats get an annual exam. Um, again, we don't always anesthetize them every year. Um, it depends on their age and whether we can get blood when they're awake. Um, so yeah, it depends a lot on each animal, but most, most of the animals here get annual exams. Um, Jan wants to know, why is he so calm? So <laughs> Mr. Wilson is, like I said, he's a domestic Muscovy duck. Um, so he was probably brought up around people. Um, and then he has always just been a calm duck here at the zoo. Um, he's just always had that personality. Um, so he just is fine just hanging out with us while we do his exam. Uh, Wolfie wants to know if he has teeth. He does not have teeth. Now he does have these little razor edges to his bills, um, but they aren't teeth like what you and I have and they don't fall out. Um, but it does allow him to grab his food and chew his food. So I don't know if you can kind of see the ridges there along the inside of the beak. So that's what they have instead of teeth. Jillian, Jessica, and Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be super offended in a moment. They want to know how much you weigh. <laughs> so Ooh, let's get the scale. We can actually weigh him. We can. Um, so I will say on average... He goes between eight to 10 pounds. It depends on the season. So he gains weight and loses weight with the seasons. Um, and now out in the wild, um, I guess with the domestic ones too, um, he's also larger because he's a male. So for Muscovy ducks, the females are about half the size of a male. So he is a very large boy, but he should be. So while they get that out, um, Chrissy wants to know if he's soft. He is. Um, he also has a ton of down feathers under his waterproof feathers. Um, so he, uh, yeah, he is. Super soft. No, no, no. <laughs> not time to leave yet. You're not. Mm -hmm. done. You're fine. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Well, I know he you're excited. excited to know how much he weighs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. What do you weigh today? Oh, I sure can. So nobody wants to do math right now. All right. You ready? There we go. Here we go. Alright. Oh, good job, buddy. He, <laughs> he is just over nine and a half pounds right now. So he is closer to his 10 pound mark at the moment. Um, Jamie wants to know, do they breathe underwater? Um, so they don't really breathe underwater like a fish is able to, or even the diving ducks who are able to hold their breath for a long time. Um, if you think of something like a cormorant, they can hold their breath and go fishing. Um, these guys are actually considered dabblers. Um, that's their method of feeding. So they just kind of like stick their bill in and eat food off of the bottom. Um, so no, they don't hold their breath really for a prolonged period. Um, not any longer than you or I would if we were going swimming. <laughs> Lynn would like to know, what is that on the back of his neck? Um, so it is a, for lack of better terms, it's, it's warty skin. 
Um, so it's part of the characteristic that makes him a Muscovy duck. Um, so you'll see he has a little like papillomas there above his eye. Um, so the little ridges, and he has the extra proliferation on his face. Um, and so that's just more of it on his back there. Lucas and Grayson, they would like to know, is he endangered? So being a domestic Muscovy duck, no, he is not endangered. Um, they are doing fine. Um, and actually their wild counterparts are also doing pretty well. Um, they have a very large expanse on, on the East Coast of Central America and then most of South America. So they're doing pretty good right now, but that's a great question. Owen wants to know, are ducks warm or cold-blooded? So they are actually warm-blooded. Um, so he um, isn't affected as much by what the temperature is in the room. Um, and ducks have it even better because when they preen and put that oil all over their feathers, they're actually self-insulating, so they can actually maintain their body uh, temperature a lot better than a lot of mammals can. Um, so still warm-blooded. Let's see. Steve wants to know, what is the biggest duck in the world? All right, I'll be honest. I had to look because I didn't know. <laughs> um, but. The largest one is the eider duck, which is found in Europe. And then the second largest duck in the world is the Muscovy duck. So we were pretty close. They are the largest in North America and the second largest in the world. Let's see who no. next. Ellie, how long do ducks live? Um, so for Muscovy ducks, uh, out in the wild, they would live to be maybe 10 to 13 years old. Um, but when they live in managed care, where they get veterinary care, they get fed, they don't have to worry about any animals trying to eat them, um, they can live up to 20 years. So we still have many, many great years with Mr. Wilson. Um, <laughs> Lila wants to know if he likes baths. So he likes to give himself baths. Um, I think if we tried to put him in a tub, he would be very offended by it. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he does like swimming. Um, out in his exhibit, he has a pond that he shares with our capybara, Scar. Um, and so he loves going in there and swimming and giving himself baths. Um, but no, he doesn't particularly like when we do it for him. <laughs> Tyler wants to know, how can ducks have babies? So since they are kind of bird, um, they lay eggs um, like most, like all the other birds do. Um, so same thing with a lot of animals. You have a male and a female duck. The female's the one who will lay eggs. Um, and then the female's the one who will guard the nest. Um, for Muscovy ducks, they have a clutch or a group um, of about 8 to 15 eggs at a time. Um, so it can be anywhere in that range. Um, and the female does most of the nest protecting um, for ducks. Reagan wants to know, what do they eat? All right, well here, Mr. Wilson uh, has a commercial grain diet um, that has all of his vitamins and minerals that he needs. And then he also gets a lot of snacks. So in the first bowl here, we have white millet, um, which the ducks here all absolutely love. Um, then we also have some earthworms for him, which usually he goes crazy about, but <laughs> I think he's a little nervous being on camera today and not being in his normal habitat. Um, and then we also sometimes give them um, romaine lettuce. Um, we'll chop up grapes for him. Um, out in the wild, they would eat a lot of food that you find in a marsh, um, so reeds and small fish, crustaceans, um, things like that. Jackson wants to know, do they get enrichment or toys? Absolutely. So all of our animals here at the zoo have an enrichment schedule, um, which means that we have a way that we try to make sure they have different enrichment every day of the week. So they're not getting the same thing over and over again. Um, so a lot of the things that we like to try with uh, Mr. Wilson are um, things like, like hay mats, um, they're woven mats like you see for a bunny. He loves those for whatever reason. Um, we uh, will sometimes put his food in different containers. Um, that one's gotten a little harder now that he lives with Scar, the capybara, because she likes to eat all of his food. Um, so he actually has a special dish that only his face fits in and hers doesn't so that he can actually eat all of his own food. Um, and then we also sometimes give them, you know, some balls, sometimes bells to ring. Um, so it varies, but yes, he definitely gets enrichment. All right, there is a joke. I'm really bad at jokes, I'm sorry. So we're gonna give Andrew credit for this because um, <laughs> I am not that funny. Um, I, I can't read the middle part, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> don't quack me up over here. I hope the bill isn't expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
you, thank you very much, Andrew. Um, we'd like to say many thanks to everyone who has donated to our emergency fund and to all of the restaurants that have donated food uh, for our animals during the zoo's closure. Uh, we really hope to see you guys back on Facebook Live on Friday at 2 o'clock for our giraffe a which should be a really great way to spend your afternoon with our giraffe. Uh, we're able to continue to provide a high level of care to all the animals at the zoo, uh, thanks to the generosity of some of the uh, companies that we've already mentioned, including Metropolitan Veterinary Associates, Wedgwood Pharmacy, and Veterinarian Recommended Solutions. We really appreciate all of your support. So uh, please stay tuned after uh, today's lesson has ended uh, because we are going to attempt to answer as many questions as we can uh, that you guys have had during this session. And we really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for watching. <laughs>